Good morning or good afternoon, doctor. My name is Kok Kai Ren with metrics number 293892. My group will be presenting the title, The Education Performance of SQS Graduate During Their University Life for the Group Assignment. Member in this group are Tan Hong Ying, Gu Hui Tian, Choi Yun Yu, and our leader, Felicia Liu Ni Wei. First, introduction, background of study. As we all know, education is really important for a person. This is because education will not only help a person to gain knowledge, but it also helps a person to have the chances to get a job. Most of the people believe that a higher education level with good results may affect the employability as well as the salary paid by the company. That's why our group conducted this study to obtain information from SQS graduates at UUM. The purpose of the study is to investigate the education performance of SQS graduates during their university life so that the factors and way of affecting employability can be determined and identified. Next is the objective of study. In this study, we have five main objectives. The objective one is to describe the demographic of the respondent, which is the frequency of program, gender, ethnic state, entrance qualification, total SAM status, working, type or level of work, CGPA, and salary. The second objective is to analyze and compare CGPA between gender, entrance qualification, program, ethnic, total semester status, working status, working sector, and type of level of work. Objective 3 is to analyze and compare salary between gender, program, ethnic, working sector, type or level of work. Objective 4 is to analyze and compare salary between SPM Maths, SPM MS, SPM English, MET, total semester, working experience, and salary. While the last objective is to identify and depict relationship between CGPA and total semester as well as working experience. Next, I'm going to talk about methodology. In this research, the sampling method that we use are simple, random, and systematic. For our graphing method, we use the bar chart. Next, we also use some measures of central tendency in this research, which are mean, mod, and median. There are also measures of dispersion we are using in our research, which are range, interquartile range, standard deviation, and variance. We also draw a box plot in our research, which the box plot includes maximum value, minimum value, first quartile, third quartile, median, and range. Last but not least, we also draw a scatter plot in our research, which the scatter plot is the correlation between two variables. Literature review. Literature review contains gender, gender contains male and female. CGPA, CGPA contains less than 1.5, 1.5 to 1.99, 2 to 2.99, 3 to 3.66, 3.67 to 4. The first class owner is 3.67 to 4. Salary, salary contains 1,500 to 2,579, 2,580 to 3,659. 3,660 to 4,739, 4,740 to 5,890, 5,820 to 6,899, 6,900 to 7,979, 7,980 to 9,059, 9,060 to 10,139, 10,140 to 11,219, 11,220 to 12,300. Now I will proceed to the objective one, which is to describe the demographic of the respondent. First is the frequency of program. From the graph and the table above, we can know that the program decision science contains the highest frequency compared to the other two, as it consists of 172 out of 340 graduates. The scale of measurement is nominal because there are three programs in SQS. And the data is this discrete data as it is measured in categories. So lastly, the central tendency that can be found is mode. Next is the frequency of gender. From the graph above, we know that the number of female graduates is higher than the male graduates, which consists of 233 out of 340. The scale of measurement is nominal because there are two genders. This data is discrete data and is measured in categories. And the central tendency that can be determined here is mood. Next is the frequency of ethnic. From the graph and the table above, we know that the frequency of ethnic Chinese graduate is the highest, which consists of 121 out of 340, which is 35.59%, while the Indian is the lowest, as it consists of only 41 
out of 340 and 12.06%. The scale of measurement is nominal because there are only 4 ethnic in SQS and the data is discrete data because the ethnic is measured in variable. The center of tendency can be seen here is also moved. Next is the frequency of state. From the graph and table above, we know that the number of graduates came from para is the highest. It consists of 10% out of 100, while from the police is the lowest, which is 2.35% out of 100. The scale of measurement is nominal because it's classified into 15, 14 hometown. The frequency of the hometown is discrete data because the hometown is measured in variable, and the central currency can be seen is smooth. Followed by frequency of entrance qualification. The entrance qualification of graduates from STPM has the highest frequency which is 52.94%, while from others has the lowest frequency, which is 7.35%. The scale of measurement is nominal because they are using five entrance qualification. The frequency of the entrance qualification is discrete data because the entrance qualification is measured in categories. The central tendency can be determined in smooth. And now we continue with the frequency of total self status. The number of students graduate on time is the highest, whereas for the fast track is the lowest. The scale of measurement is nominal because the total stand status is measured in categories and the standard tendency can be determined from the graph is the mode. Next is the frequency of working. Based on the graph and the table, we know that the number of graduate working are higher than non-working. The graduate working are consists of 99.41% while the non-working just consists of 0.59. Now, this, they are appealing of two non-working this because they are still a student. And the measurement is of scale is nominal because it consists of yes or no. The frequency of the working status is discrete data because the working status is measured in category. Based on the graph, know that the central tendency that can be seen easily is smooth. It's the frequency of type or level of work. From the graph and the table, we know that the most number of type of work is executive, which consists of 249%, while the least is the student, which consists of only 2%. The scale of measurement is nominal because there are six types of work, which are executive, lecturer, miscellaneous, director, teacher, and student. The frequency of the types of work are discrete data as it can be divided into six categories. The central tendency that can be easily seen from the table and graph is smooth. Next is a CGPA. Most of the graduate have the CGPA range of 2 to 2.99, which is 143 graduates, whereas the CGPA range of 3.67 to 4 has the least number of graduates, which is 69 graduates. The data used in this graph is quantitative data. The scalar of measurement is ratio because there is natural zero. The frequency of CGPA is continuous data because it can be measured. From the table, we know that the maximum of CGPA is 3.96, the minimum is 2.02, .02, the mean is 3.06, median is 3.085, mode is 2.85, standard deviation is 0 0.56, variance 0 0.31, and range is 1.94. Lastly is the salary. Most of the graduates have a CGPA range of 2.0 to 2.99, which is 42.06%, whereas the CGPA range of 3.0 6.7 to 4.0 has the least number of graduates, which is 20.29. The data used in this graph is quantitative data. The scale of measurement is ratio because there is axis of nature zero. The frequency of CGPA is continuous data because it can be measured. And based on the table, we know that the minimum salary is 1,005, maximum is 12,300, mean is 6,353.24, median is 6,400, Mode is 2,400, standard deviation is 2,853.65, variance is 811.9371.89, and lastly, the range is 10,800. Objective 2. To analyze and compare CGPA between gender and track qualifications, program, ethnic, total semester status, working status, working sector, and type of work. From the relationship between CGPA and gender, the graph uses its sports plot. The median CGPA for the male is 3.12, whereas for female is 2.82. The quarter 3 for male is 3.67, whereas obtained by female is 3.44. It shows that male achieve better CGPA than female. In conclusion, the sports plot for male and female show that it's right skill.
From the histogram, it showed that the relationship between CGPA and entry qualifications, the number of the graduates getting the CGPA within two to four in SDPM is the highest, which is 180 out of 340. The number of the graduates which have the lowest frequency is SDAM at CGPA 3.67 to 4, which is for graduates. From the histogram above, it showed the relationship between CGPA and program. It showed that the program of decision science obtained the highest CGPA at 2 to 2.99, which is 71 graduates. Besides that, the program of statistics at the CGPA of 3.67 to 4 obtained the lowest frequency, which is 16 graduates. The histogram above shows the relationship between CGPA and NA. From the histogram, we can see that Chinese from the CGPA of 3.67 to 4, 3 to 3.66 have the highest frequency, which are 35 and 49 respectively. Whereas for Malay, from the CGPA of 2 to 2.99, obtain the highest frequency, which are 53 graduates. Indians obtain the lowest frequency in CGPA of 3.67 to 4 and 2 to 2.99 which are 8 and 7 graduates whereas Malay has lower frequency in the CGPA of 3 to 3.66 which are 18 graduates compared to others. From the graph above show the relationship between CGPA and total SEM status. It shows that the graduates that graduate on time obtain the highest frequency at CGPA 3 to 4, which are 183, where for the CGPA at 2 to 2.99 show that the highest number of graduates who extend are 73. Besides that, the total semester status of fast track at the CGPA 2 to 3.66 has the lower frequency, which are 32 graduates. The histogram above shows the relationship between CGPA and working status. It shows that the graduates who are working have the highest frequency in CGPA 2 to 4 compared to the graduates which are not working. The graduates which are working has the frequency of 338, whereas which are not working has 2 graduates. The histogram shows the relationship between the CGPA and working sector. The range of CGPA in 2 to 2.99 which work in public has the highest frequency which are 107 graduates, whereas the lower frequency is in the CGPA of 3 to 3.66 of graduates who work in public which has 2 graduates. The histogram above shows the relationship between the CGPA and level of work. Most of them who work as executive have the highest frequency in the CGPA of 2 to 4 which have 249 graduates. The low frequency in the CGPA of 3.67 to 4 who work as a teacher, 2 graduates who is a student in the CGPA of 3 to 3.66 whereas the low frequency in the CGPA of 2 to 2.99 is matchlessness who only have 21 graduates. Our third objective is to analyze and compare salary between gender, program, ethnic, working sector, and type or level of work. <coughs> this histogram shows the relationship between the salary and gender. While gender is qualitative, discrete, and nominal data, and salary is quantitative, discrete, and nominal data. Okay. From the histogram, we can clearly see that most of the graduate people are having a salary range of 2580 ringgit to 3659 ringgit and also the range of 3650 ringgit to 4739 ringgit which are 46 people accordingly while the least frequent range of salary is 11220 ringgit until 12300 ringgit which is only 6 people this histogram shows the relationship between salary and program. Uh, the data of program is qualitative, discrete, and nominal, while the data of salary is quantitative, discrete, and nominal. Okay, based on this histogram, most of them who are taking decision science and business maths are having a salary range of 2580 ringgit to 3659 ringgit and 3660 ringgit until 4739 ringgit, which are 25 and 15 people accordingly, while the most people who are taking statistics have the salary range of 5,820 ringgit until 6,899 ringgit, 6,900 ringgit until 7,979 ringgit, and also 9,060 ringgit until 10,139 ringgit, which is 10 people each. While 
the least frequent of all programs are having range of salary of 11,220 ringgit until 12,300 ringgit which are only 0, 2 and 4 people respectively, respectively for both three programs. The data of ethnic and salary are both discrete and nominal while ethnic is qualitative and salary is quantitative. Okay. This histogram shows the relationship between salary and ethnic. Most of the graduate people are having a salary range of 2580 ringgit until 3659 ringgit and 3660 ringgit to 4739 ringgit which are 46 people accordingly while the least frequent range of salary is 11,220 ringgit until 12,300 ringgit which is only 6 people okay now we are talking about working sector and salary both of them are discrete and nominal data while working sector is qualitative data and salary is quantitative data okay this histogram shows the relationship between salary and working sector most of them who are working in private sector are having the salary range of 6,900 ringgit until 7,979 ringgit which is 40 people while for the public sector is 3,660 ringgit until 4,739 ringgit which is only 45 people and for on sector it is 10,140 ringgit until 11,219 ringgit which is only 21 people Last but not least, in this objective tree, we are talking about level of work with salary. While both of them are discrete and nominal data, but level of work is qualitative data and salary is quantitative data. This histogram shows the relationship between salary and level of work. Most of the graduate people are having a salary range of 2,580 ringgit until 3,650 ringgit and 3,660 3, ringgit until 4,730 ringgit which are 46 people accordingly while the least frequent range of salary is 11,200 ringgit until 12,300 ringgit which is only 6 people Thank you Next, I would like to present about Objective 4 In Objective 4, we need to analyze and compare CGPA between SPMX, SPNMX, SPN English, MOEC, Total Semester, Working Experience and Salary the buffer shows the relationship between CGPA and SPMX. Median for grade 6C is the lowest, which the CGPA is 2.05, while grade 1A is the highest, which the CGPA is 3.63. That is outliers for grade 2B. Shade of the distribution for grade 1A and 5C are skewed to the left, grade 2B and 3B are skewed to the right, and grade 6C is symmetrical. So, we can conclude that most of the graduates obtain grade 2A for SPMX which is 109 graduates. The poster shows the relationship between CGPA and SPMX. Median for grade 6C is the lowest, which the CGPA is 2.09, while grade 1A is the highest, which the CGPA is 3.9. Shade of the distribution for grade 1A and 4B are skewed to the left, grade 3B, 5C and 6C are skewed to the right, and grade 2A is symmetrical. So, we can conclude that most of the graduates obtain grade 2A for SPM and MX, which is 119 graduates. The box plus shows the relationship between CGPA and SPM English. Median for grade 7D is the lowest, which the CGPA is 2.09, while grade 1A is the highest, which the CGPA is 3.67. There is outliers for grade 1A. Shade of the distribution for grade 2A, 3B, and 6C are skewed to the left, Grade 5C and 7D are skewed to the right and Grade 1A is symmetrical. So we can conclude that most of the graduates obtain Grade 1A of SPN English, which is 93 graduates. Based on the scatter plot, we know that the relationship between CGPA and MOE is a positive linear relationship. Person correlation is applied to find the relationship between CGPA and MOE because the scatter plot shows linear relationship. By using Excel, we found that person correlation is equal to 0 0.6272, which means it is nearly to 1. On that, we can conclude that there is strong positive linear relationship between CGPA and MOE. Based on the scatter plot, we know that the relationship between CGPA and total semester is a negative linear relationship. This graph has two outliers at six semesters. 
Personal correlation is applied to find the relationship between CGPA and total semester because the scatter plot shows linear relationship. By using Excel, we found that personal correlation is equal to negative 0 0.6594, which means it is nearly to negative 1. On that, we can conclude that there is a strong negative linear relationship between CGPA and total semester. Based on the scatter plot, we know that the relationship between CGPA and working experience is a positive linear relationship. Person correlation is applied to find the relationship between CGPA and working experience because the scatter plot shows linear relationship. By using Excel, we found that person correlation is equal to 0 0.0953, which means it is nearly to 0. On that, we can conclude that there is big positive linear relationship between CGPA and working experience. Based on the scatter plot, we know that the relationship between CGPA and salary is a positive non-linear relationship. There are two outliers between 8,000 to 10,000. Person correlation is applied to find the relationship between CGPA and salary. By using Excel, we found that person correlation is equal to 0 0.5201, which means it is nearly to 0. On that, we can conclude that there is moderate positive non-linear relationship between CGPA and salary. Lastly, I will continue the presentation with Objective 5. In Objective 5, we will identify and interpret relationship between salary and total semester, and also relationship between salary and working experience. Based on the scatter plot, we saw that the relationship between salary and total semester is a negative linear relationship. Thus, Pearson correlation is applied to find the relationship between salary and total semester. By using Excel, we found that Pearson correlation is equal to negative 0 0.559, which means that it is nearly to zero. From there, we can conclude that there is moderate negative linear relationship between salary and total semester. Based on this scatter plot, we saw that the relationship between salary and working experience is a positive linear relationship. Thus, Pearson correlation is applied to find the relationship between salary and working experience. By using Excel, we found that Pearson correlation is equal to 0 0.297, which means it is nearly to zero. So, we can conclude that there is a moderate positive linear relationship between salary and working experience. In conclusion, the demography of graduates studying SQQS1033 can be described with proper data analysis like mode for qualitative data and the other types of data analysis for quantitative data. There are also some recommendations for the next researcher. First, set up solid objective. Second, improve data collection by using suitable sampling method. Third, ensure the data is accurate, complete, and timely. Lastly, visualize and interpret results for better understanding on the findings so that it helps in decision makings. That's all from Group 6. Thank you very much and have a great day.